Welcome to Joseph's Model Railway Room. And this is the first video indeed of a series of building my dream layout. I'd like to first of all just thank you for the opportunity for sharing a moment with me in the journey we're going to share together in some of the projects I am up to. For those of you that haven't seen any of my other videos, I just want to get a bit of housekeeping out of the way first, and that is you don't need to subscribe or subscribe, or you don't need to like or do any of those other things. By all means, please comment. That would be fantastic. You can have a chat about those things as we carry on. But this is really just a bit of a, a documentation of uh, my model railway that's been in the process for some 40 years. Needless to say though, um, special shout outs to all the usual people who put videos together, everyone from Charlie at Chadwick uh, Model Railway, great inspiration there. And again, videos that uh, I want to try and keep mine short as well, and where a lot of other people are going to spend time um, going through their model railways, everything from track laying and wiring and all sorts of things like that. Mine often might be covering things that um, aren't always covered. Um, there's plenty of videos on installing turnout motors and things like that, so um, I don't want to try and cover things that have already um, been said before. I think there's plenty of informative videos on there. So often my videos, when they might spring up, and they will be far and few between, unfortunately. Uh, just very busy with some other things. But that being said, uh, please enjoy it and just looking at things on a different perspective. Sometimes parts of videos that don't always get as much love and um, the way I've done things might not be uh, the most ideal or perfect way for other people, but it's because I'm just trying to get a particular outcome. I'm not trying to be uh, die-hard, hardcore, weathered locos and all the rest of it. I do just enjoy a good operation, a bit of a story to tell, and just having a whole lot of fun along the way. Of course, it's me, Joseph. Again, like the other videos, if you don't know it's me, you'll always recognize the shirt. Yes, I've got gray hair now because I'm getting old. It's hard to believe. I always have two pens on me. That's just a rule. And while I'm always banging on about, you know, it's me because I'm wearing a pair of shoes that are Nikes with the red swoosh, you'll notice I'm not wearing any shoes at the moment because it's quite simple. There's a rule in this room. You're not allowed to wear any shoes. It's as simple as that. Um, while there's no official sign, there will be one coming up uh, in, in uh, a future video. Here is the unofficial sign. And as homemade as it is, um, the reason of the carpet, which is going to be a big feature about the room, is that it was um, the carpet that was found in a lot of schools and the alike um, back in the 70s and 80s, certainly when I grew up. And as a result, uh, always just reminds me of a happier time to just come down on the floor, spill your Lego out and have it. Never had it in my home. I've always wanted it. And uh, uh, happy wife, happy life has allowed me to make this uh, dream come true. So um, let's proceed with the concept. And in this video, we're talking all about the room. So just before we start bringing in and starting the layout and all the rest, this room was purpose built with this in mind. And that's what it's all about. Now, I've got a few notes. Uh, again, I, I haven't written them up and I haven't scripted it like I've done in some other videos. We're just gonna keep it nice and short. Um, so I just want to tell you all about the inspiration for what I'm doing and I guess that all came about from when I was young. Uh, my father, who is a model railway person, and much love and respect for that of course, uh, had mountains of train magazines next to the bed. But in particular, even though the front cover was missing on the one he had, it happened to be a copy of the 1978 Hornby catalogue. And um, in particular, the uh, feature layout that of course was in there happened to be this particular uh, demonstration one here, which we'll just um, snap over to a uh, close up there for you. Now, I always dreamed of being that kid in the photo. I don't know who he is, but I was as jealous as could be about it. Needless to say, I absolutely love that layout. It's like you could jump in the picture, reach out, touch the controller, and the concept of having two locomotives running simultaneously absolutely blew my mind away. In fact, a lot of what is in the catalog with the pictures um, is, particularly with the night ones, there's just some really, really tremendous sort of footage taken. And um, while my layout's not gonna explicitly be based on that, um, that is a story for another day.
Ta-da! And here it is. Hornby 997, the original track form layout. Um, that's uh, the original that I had shipped over from Merry Old England. I haven't even opened this box as yet. It might not even be in there. Needless to say though, it has arrived in its original box. As I understand, of course it is in there. Um, I'm probably gonna make a separate um, mini series of videos that will still be in line with this, um, where I'd like to recreate that exact layout the way it is uh, in that uh, picture, including the Besser Block brick wall behind. Um, so I've set aside a little space um, to do that but uh, that'll happen later in the future. But I do want to get that from the get-go. That was always the inspiration of having the dream layout and all the rest of it. Um, and that's where it's all about. So I do still want to make that come to fruition. So once again, I seem to be blabbering on and it's hardly staying to five minutes. So we'd better get back to that script. So as mentioned, the 1978 catalog, lusting over that, fantastic stuff, and want to make it happen. Now, of course, my model railway layout is going to be sort of featuring a lot of BR Blue. It is going to be an English thing. I live in Australia. I'm in Queensland. Um, and while I also have another project I'm trying to do with an Australian layout, this is going to be just the feature at the moment. So what, what really inspired me about having a room like this? First of all, we're in a room that is six metres by five meters. It should be six by six. I don't want to get into it. Happy wife, happy life. Let's just accept I have what I have and it's fantastic. So we're going to make it work. Needless to say, uh, there's going to be uh, my concept plans. I'm going to share with you just briefly. I'll share some photos here of basically my room dimensions, uh, basic sort of a, not necessarily a track layout, but just to see how I can try and make it fit in the room and the concept of how I want to break each section up scenic wise so that what you'll be looking at and all the rest of it. Um, one of the biggest inspirations for this particular room uh, is from a TV show called The Simpsons. Um, and in the first season, we're introduced to a character, Ned Flanders, who is uh, The Simpsons' neighbours. Um, and we see their basement. As a result, there's a model railway in it, uh, there's a bar. Look, I'm not a big drinker, so I, I, it's not much point me having a man cave with a, a bar, so to speak. Um, uh, any more than the uh, the foosball table and all the rest of it, or bumper pool, as we discover they have later on. Um, but something about that, and trying to look at the image of it, and I said, yeah, that's more of a tiled floor. So again, story for another day. But I didn't. I wanted the carpet. I don't even care about model collecting and the rest. Everyone will tell you no carpet. We want to minimise the dust. I absolutely agree. I couldn't agree more. But I cannot say no to this carpet, no matter what happens. And that's where we are. So the feature is this marvelous green carpet that walks in, and you're like you're on a mini golf or a pool table. Oh, that calming thing. Favorite color is green. Could you believe it? Um, now I would have loved this to be bigger. Now. Those people in European countries and, and the US, you know, you've got your attics or your lofts or indeed you've got these basements. I'd absolutely love it to be in a basement. I think that'd be fantastic. A nice big area. I'm quite jealous to all of you that have that. But a few things about that, where we are. We are in an area where, although we're in no direct issues with floods or anything like that, basements are generally not considered here in, in Queensland for various um, community reasons. And of course, yes, we can have flood waters. And the last thing you want is to be pumping water out of there. So um, I don't have that. I've got to accept where it is. The other thing is, um, from the get-go, I'm really not... I know I'm going to get old and it's going to be an issue with stairs and climbing on the baseboards and all the rest of it. So hence, this is all on one level. I can get old. The door, I can just wheel a wheelchair in if I'm old. I'm stuck in a wheelchair. Really, really big thing on practicality there. So that's basically what it's all about. I really didn't want windows at all in this room. The builder uh, had advised me that, um, well, we can't do that. I, I still can't figure out why when I'm paying the bill for building a house, but needless to say, so there are three narrow windows here in the feature brick wall. And as you'll see in this picture with the natural sunlight, they have been frosted. And I've also turned them into almost a feature. I don't want to say stained glass window because it's hard hardly that, but just to give that red, green, blue, um, classic sort of look to it, which absolutely just think adds a bit of magic. At the end of the day, there are aluminium uh, louvers on the outside that completely make sure there's no direct sunlight because the biggest thing is I don't want any UV in here fading carpets or fading any of my models or any of that. So that's just basically the situation there. Um, of course, at the end of the day, 
Um, I'll just put the LED uh, panel trough lighting here at the moment, which is on dimmers and all the rest of it. Again, the layout will have its own feature lighting that goes with it, but just something that you can set the mood for. It's practical and sort of wanted something that looked a little more commercial. I didn't want that residential. I don't want battens. I don't want exposed conduits. I really wanted something that really looked slick and professional, like you're walking into the Hornby exhibition room in their main um, showroom or something like that, which I can only imagine. Um, the other thing is I'm really, really, particularly on this wall, uh, wanted to have just a split system um, air conditioning unit here. Uh, again, really, again, we're in Queensland, we don't really need the heating component, so it's just a cool would have done. My biggest thing is the layout um, is basically um, dog bone that wraps around the room, as you'll see in this diagram here. And the thing is, uh, the only biggest problem I had with it, I wanted the split because it's a lot more energy efficient to run. Uh, it's simple, there's just a single hole that blows through the wall there and it's all taken care of. Quick, cheap, simple. Mitsubishi Heavy Industry split system, how could you go wrong? It'll be installed, ready to go there for what? $1,200 or $1,500, Australia. The problem is that if in the unlikely event something happened with condensation or something like that, that's gonna hit the layout. Now that again, once again, might not seem like a big thing. Um, so I ended up just raising the funds together to put in a commercial um, HVAC system. So it's just fully ducted for the other half of the house as well. But really the focus was just this room. Again, it's zoned and isolated, so we can cut it out if no one's in here and all the rest of it. Um, I do think at the end of the day, it was the way to go. I mean, the room is nice and symmetrical with everything. It really flows, fits the thing. And um, we have an enormous solar um, array that can look after that. So it's really from a cost perspective, it's not about that. No, I think it's just magnificent that it's done. Um, I won't lie to you, I was feeling a bit ambivalent about the price and putting it in, but when all is said and done, I think it's going to be a tremendous asset um, for this room. Rack up here to mount a TV or some sort of a panel for whatever reason, that's all sort of there. Again, the room also has a series of ducts concealed into the framework of the house, so should there ever need to be uh, a point to upgrade or do something, it's quite easy to do. Again, the upstairs above us, while it's not actually a room or an attic or anything, has got floorboards, it is air conditioned, and could be something up there. But if anything needs to be serviced up and above and needs to be dropped in, really nice and simple. So um, the other thing is obviously feature brick wall. I've always wanted, I think it's just a great contrast at the end of the day. And um, again, extra insulation, acoustical benefits for the most part, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about running the railway inside um, where it's gonna be reflecting that noise. I'm just talking about from the outdoors. We're, we're in, a, in, a, in a quiet town. Um, quiet section, we don't have much road traffic, but I just like the idea, it's just one less distraction that I can uh, be bothered about if the neighbor's outside mowing lawns or something like that. The other key thing about this room, apart from having a layout that'll be the sort of U-shaped wrapping around the actual room, um, is above it is going to be a shelf containing a bunch of toys, nothing too collectible or over the top, just Toys, I like my toys. I have a lot of Hot Wheels and Matchboxes, which I'm still trying to find another section to have them housed and on display. So all in good time, maybe upstairs, maybe somewhere else. But I have just given up the idea that I don't think it's gonna fit in here. Needless to say, this room, while it's been in planning for some time, the other thing is what we're going to do, and you'll see in the next video, it will be all about the cabinetry. Um, I was just gonna build the timber framing around it, keep it very simple as we do, the curtains across the bottom, how we all seem to build model railways, but I've decided to just do something a bit special, and also while I'm making, shooting the first video, even though I've been working so hard this year to try and get this off the ground a bit sooner, um, this is the 100th year anniversary for Hornby, and as a result, there is something special that will be um, on that cabinet work as sort of my uh, paying homage to that anniversary as a result and continuing that legacy. So that'll all be explained in the next video. For the most part now, that's gonna wrap everything up. I, I hope you've enjoyed. If there are queries or questions, please let me know. The video will be published in 2021 at the moment, but I am, Filming this today, being 2022, 
20, 100th year anniversary, and I'm right in on December at the moment, and I'm filming this now knowing that within the next 48 hours, the room is gonna have the cabinetry installed, and we're going to start this project. So just to see it now in all its glory, share a few pictures of you with the room now, and um, enjoy, and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you so much. Toodles.